There we go. And we're live. Hello, everybody. And thank you for joining us. Welcome to our webinar coming to you uh, from Van Arts, and, but also from all across Canada tonight, actually. We have a wonderful panel um, of uh, animation professionals here with us tonight. So uh, we'll start with just a really quick, quick round of um, introductions. So um, Meg, why don't we start with you? Sure. Okay. I'm Meg Leader. I graduated from the 2D42 class. Um, I work currently for Atomic Ottawa, but I've also worked uh, at the Vancouver Studio for Atomic, worked at Wild Brain, but when it was DHX, and I've worked for Portfolio in Toronto as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome here. And Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Fillion. I also graduated from Van Arts uh, right after Meg. Can't remember my number exactly. <laughs> but um, I was hired by Atomic. I'm an animator on a show that I can't say, and I've been there since uh, pretty much I left graduated from school. Awesome. Good. Welcome here. And Matthew. Hi, I'm Matthew LaRose. Um, I graduated just before Meg. <laughs> uh, and I've been working at Wild Brain for the last few years. Um, I'm lead animator right now on Strawberry Shortcake. Wow. Yeah. Cool. All right. Number and five. I'll I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm I'm Patrick Soriel. I work alongside Ken at Van Arts on the marketing side. I'm also an instructor uh, in the web broadcasting department. But I am aware of animation. And that's why we're here tonight. We want to talk a bit about animation, specifically 2D animation, with three uh, Van Arts alumni that went to our school and then went off in their separate directions and have started blazing amazing careers in the worlds of 2D animation. So as part of the purpose of Ken and I in these, these sessions, we try to educate people and let them know about what type of opportunities out there what type of obstacles, what type of hurdles, how, what you should be thinking about if you're considering a career as an animator, what sort of advice would, would you pass on to somebody who is considering going to school and learning uh, the art of 2D animation? So that's what we're all about tonight. So we want you uh, to think and ask questions in the chat bubble. We'll get around to answering your questions and we'll let uh, Amanda, let uh, Meg and Matthew have the opportunity to give you individual replies. So this is your opportunity to ask pros what it's like to break into the world of 2D animation. Okay. Absolutely. And let us so, know in the chat where you are watching from as well. I see oh, we yeah. have about 60 people watching right now, um, but we don't know where people are. So tell people, just go ahead and type in the chat uh, who you are, if you're a high school student, if you're a college student, where let us know where you're watching this webinar uh, yeah. from on YouTube. And, and uh, tell us, and, and one other thing, tell us why you're interested in 2D animation. Is it a show? Is it is it a moment in your life? Was there was there a voice, an invisible voice that said you must go into 2D animation, learn everything you can? We're curious to know what that is. Uh, okay, so as people start saying hi and populated information, let's ask a question to our table of professionals. Um, why did you each get involved in animation? That's probably a good starting point. What did you have to do to convince your parents that this is the career you want to go in and do? So let's let's go to Amanda. Amanda, what what, what got you into animation? Why did you want to do it? Um, actually, I was in a different career beforehand, and I decided I wanted to do something new, uh, being a dental assistant to start off with. And so it was by chance I actually came across the studio and found a pamphlet. It was actually at a fan expo or one of the conventions. I remember and that. And so it, it got, I got really interested in it, and I just decided, you know what, I need to change. I want to go on a new career. And so I uprooted where I was and moved down to Vancouver and took the program. So that's how it got started. You just wanted to go, you were interested yeah. in like fan expo, geeky yeah, sort expo. of material? Yeah, like I, I would draw, but I never considered it as an actual career or being where I was like further up north. It wasn't something that entered most people's mind. You like what you can make a career out of artwork just because yeah. it's not something that many people would think about. Right. 
Okay. All right. Okay. So the dental world lost somebody, <laughs> but the animation world gained it. So that's good. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay, Meg, what about yourself? What got you into animation? Kind of the same story as Amanda, but very different. Um, I was also in a different career. I was in acting. I moved to Vancouver to get my bachelor's in performance arts. And then I, I've also really always loved visual arts and movement and telling stories. So I was kind of like, my life goal was to find a way to do that in the best form for me personally. And I feel like I gained a lot from acting that I brought into animation as well. So it, it kind of, I wanted to be in visual arts, but I didn't know how to make money off of it. Like a medicine too. It's not really something that's described in high school as being a viable like job that you can actually pay the bills with, but it's completely possible. Um, it's actually very stable from like basically all of our experiences. So yeah, it's been great. My cousins were all animators. I would talk to them about it when I was in acting and I was like, oh, maybe I'll try. And then I just stumbled upon fan arts. I don't even remember how, but yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> Probably some kind of, yeah, yeah, dark shady alley or something like that where we handle, uh, we have a table, yeah. Okay, cool. That's all right. So that gives an idea, like a, a different background. Uh, but the commonality there is like, you didn't know that this was a viable career. I, Ken and I hear that all the time from young people. Like they have no idea that you can make special effects or you can do animation or game art. It's, it's kind of nutty. And especially in a place like Vancouver, where you have so many studios, there's kids from, from high schools all across BC that have no idea that this stuff is going on. So that's another reason why we like doing these webinars is, is letting educating people know that you can actually do this as work. You know? It can be done. <laughs> yep. Okay. Last but not least, Matthew. So you're an animator as well. What was the back end? What was the siren's call? Uh, I've always just kind of liked art and doodling. Um, I, I want to say like a lot of millennial animators that I know Grounds got me really into like flash animation and just wanting to kind of animate. So flash was just this thing where if you could get it, you could make your own cartoons and just put it on the internet. And then like YouTube started taking off as a thing. It's like there's all this content creation. So there's in the back of my young head, I just need to make cartoons and then I can get internet famous, um, which never <laughs> happened. But I, I did get, um, I learned how to animate. I downloaded. I found Flash in some less than reputable places that I wouldn't recommend finding them on now because I lucked out in getting not a giant virus on my computer. Um, but I ended up going to school. Um, at, um, I, there's a couple people in the chat I see from Alberta. Yeah, I'm from Edmonton too. Um, so after high school, um, I had done a little bit of research into what, like, I knew that art existed. People made cartoons, people made video games. Somebody's making money off of this. So I knew that there were, like, options. Um, so I went to Nate originally, took some animation, ended up working in video games for a couple of years, making mobile games. Um, and then decided that video games wasn't for me, um, and I wanted to pursue the animation stuff, like, more direct to make shows and less like video game animations, which some people like, but it wasn't for me, and more like longer form and show things. So looked around, took some classes, ended up at Van Arts, um, who I found through a coworker that went to Van Arts, uh, Jennifer Llewellyn. And um, I think that I also, very shortly after I met Jen, I also ran into fan arts at some sort of fan expo. I want to say in Calgary. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, animation just always been fun for me. So I just kind of kept running with it and it's been working out so far. So why stop now? Okay. All right. Okay. So show of hands, anybody own their own a condo or apartment or house? You paying your bills from this? I'm, I don't own. I don't own. my bills. <laughs> Working on it. In this economy. Okay. All right. So it's more of the economy, not so much the the profession. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So we're kind of all there in that boat. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let me ask. Okay. One more question to follow up on this. Um, what 
now you're looking back at your time at school. What was the, what was, if you could say like there was one thing that really paid off for your working at a studio, doing animation professionally, if you narrow it down to one thing that came from school, what would that thing be? doesn't necessarily have to be like a trained skill. It could have been something like you just got a piece of advice or, you know, like uh, a connection or whatever it was. Anything that Wayne said. Got, got oh. me. <laughs> I found that sitting down with Charles a lot and just understanding the program of like Harmony, because Harmony it can be such an intimidating beast to people. That, and just sitting down with him and just learning what everything as much as you can even it was just the basics i found that helped out so much uh going into okay. the studio okay just give a bit of background charles and wayne are two instructors at van arts and they've been here for a number of years they come from illustrious backgrounds in animation and then uh, amanda mentioned harmony which is a type of software that the students learn here uh, so they can do animation, uh, 2D animation. That's the, that's pretty much the the premier program for 2D animation studios, right? Harmony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that one big thing. Uh, this is probably said a whole bunch of van arts is like animation is animation, regardless of the tools that you're using. Um, so whether it's um, a lot of Canadian animation isn't always um, hand drawn stuff. Um, a lot of it is um, like with Toon Boom and Flash. Um, and whether or not you're doing it hand drawn or with like the rigs um, or even 3D animation, it's all still just the same principles, uh, just with different tools. It's like drawing with a pen or a pencil. Like they, they're kind of different. You need to think about things differently a little bit, but the end result is always going to be the same. And if you know how to animate, you just need to learn how to use those tools. So whatever you learn for animation can be easily applied once you've learned the tools. And it's a lot harder to learn to be an animator than it is to learn each of the tools. So yeah. um, <laughs> fan arts focus on like teaching us Toon Boom, which like Patrick said is kind of like the, the main thing that everybody's animating with. Um, Flash cartoons are still a thing though. Um, like Strawberry Shortcake is being made. Uh, it's called Adobe Animate now, but uh, so anytime that I or anyone says Flash, we mean Adobe Animate. It's just been Flash for so many years up until recently that I think we all just still call it that. But Flash and Animate uh, and Toon Boom are kind of the main things that we're all animating with. And even though Ben Arts teaches you Toon Boom because it's a more, I think it is a more complicated program than Flash is to learn, um, mm -hmm. especially like with the node view and the builds and stuff like that. Um, you'll learn the program at Van Arts um, and like you'll learn the important thing is you're going is that you know how to animate and you can learn the tools later on and a lot of studios will even just teach you those tools um, and you'll get paid to learn those tools so the main thing is learn how to animate don't worry about the tools I think I think if Wayne was here you'd probably kick my behind because I've been calling it 2D animation. It's really 2D character animation. Mm. And the character part is probably the most important thing where you're, well, as Ken said many times, you're bringing a character to life. That's what your job is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I remember um, some of that Charles said when he started teaching us the, like the lip syncing is like, you can, I'm gonna paraphrase this because it's been like five years. Um, <laughs> But you, you can animate a character as much as you want, but the most convincing way to show somebody that a character is alive is to have that character tell you that they're alive. And like getting that lip sync in there and having like the voice come out of the character and just kind of, whenever you animate something, you hit play, there's always like that satisfaction where it kind of falls into place. And then you see that character come alive because it is character animation. Um, like that's, that's like the magic. Yeah. I think that learning to animate is definitely the most important thing that you can take with fan arts, but only second to learning how to have a really good work ethic. Um, and a lot of that for me came from all the support from Wayne and Charles, who were amazing. And also, like my year, we all push each other so much to be better and having each other there to like it's not competitive it's just you're always getting better together and learning new things and having that like desire to grow 
that's probably the biggest thing you can take away because you can be the worst person in your class, but if you dedicate your time to it and you have a good attitude about learning, always ask questions in school. Like I was really bad starting school because I came from an acting background. I didn't have a lot of like the technical finesse and I didn't have a lot of the knowledge in programs. And it's so funny looking back now and having all the foundation to know how to work in a professional setting, but I definitely wouldn't have got there without asking a lot of questions and trying to be just like as positive as possible. And then when it comes to job interviews, people told me at the start of my career, like you got the job because we knew based on your personality, you'd be eager to grow and learn. Oh. I never got the jobs at the That's start from a demo reel. That's for sure. Oh. <laughs> I had to get the interview. <laughs> And then when you have that willingness and you then you can sign up for courses online during Van Arts too. You just like dive into life drawing, especially as 2D animators. It's so important, like Matt was saying, like you have the programs there to help you and you're, you're going to get like puppet builds to help keep you on model. But you really want to know how to animate. And that's what you're going to take away from Van Arts for sure. I think, I think that you had a really... Um neat foundation coming in from uh, acting Meg oh yeah because yeah and we're, we're all actors animators are actors um, yeah. we're just we're not confined to our fleshy bodies to what we can portray <laughs> um, yes yeah well, sometimes when you're working on a scene if you can't figure it out you just stand up and just act it out <laughs> and see how would this work yeah, yeah. I do do does somebody else have something to say? I'm kind of I'm scanning through the comments. Uh, do we We've got a lot of have, questions and comments. Questions. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I want to so, show your uh, demo reels first, though. Oh, we yeah. Dive into those. Yeah, we'll get to your questions. We promise. Let's let's show some of the the work that uh, Matthew, Amanda, and Meg did when they were here at Vanners. Yeah. Well, actually, this is their professional work. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So who should who should go? Who wants to go first? <laughs> just push somebody forward. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll throw Meg's reel up here. Let's see. Uh, here we go. So, Meg, you can kind of talk us through this. Um, I'm just going to have the sound down on your reel. Give us an audio commentary of what we're seeing. Okay, it's going to go by really fast. There's a lot of action cuts because The Last Kids on Earth was the first show that I fully animated start to finish. And a lot of these were like, that's one of the longest scenes I animated in the whole show. They're like two or three seconds max usually. Mm. Um, it was the craziest growing experience in my life. This was Carmen San Diego, my first job out of school. Um, and that was in Adobe Animate. I had to learn that program because we didn't do it in Van Arts. Um, but like Matt said, I, it was easy to pick up after learning just animation fundamentals and learning harmony. It's, I think, a little bit simpler. That was an adult animated cartoon that I did in Toronto that you just saw. Um, it's called Doomsday Brothers. And normally I wouldn't put it on a demo reel, actually. Some of the more adult animated, like this, kind of, it's not, it's a little bit more cut out, but I thought I'd put it in anyway because sometimes you're just gonna have the option of trying different styles mm -hmm. and you should try it and show as many different styles as you can on your demo reel just to show that you're flexible i guess right. but if i was showing a studio that was more like if i was showing atomic now my demo reel i probably wouldn't put those on it yeah yeah um i just have a couple of shows i've worked on lately that i can't show you guys for the past like right. more than a year they still haven't been released so it's just kind of my stuff from yeah, like over a year ago uh, that I can show right now. So I thought I'd just put it on to show different yeah. styles. Um, That's great. Think, You're also being very humble. You won an, an Emmy for Last Kids on Earth. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> no, you cool. personally, Meg, you won an Emmy. It's got your name oh, on it. I have a picture with it, but I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. well, you, okay, you held an Emmy. Healthier. They you pass it around to the studios. Yeah. Everyone yeah. gets to hold it. Yeah. Everybody's got like one sixty-fourth ownership of it. Okay. Something like that. I think it's cool. even that. It's, uh, it was a very humbling experience, last kids. I learned a lot, and I feel like 
that was my first dive into really fully animated stuff, more pushing for that, like, almost movie quality, which a lot of studios want to see. It, it takes a lot of time, but mm -hmm. I, for me now, it's the most rewarding. So I'm the most proud, I would say, to show, like, my last kid's stuff, other than the stuff I can't show. <laughs> uh, All right, excellent. Cool. Let's All right, see. Ken, who's the next candidate? Well, let's throw, uh, let's put Amanda's stuff up here. <laughs> okay, so this is all from Molly of Denali. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first show that I got hired on to. I actually started off as a setup artist and a key posing artist. And I was on it for over a year. It was a very unusual contract because most contracts go for about a year. And it was like close to two years by the time I was out, uh, was finally leaving Molly. And I was uh, leaving that production as a revisionist. Oh. And so I've learned a lot about um, walking cycles and just like the whole process of everything. And uh, like the different animals, because it was very, they wanted to be as close to real life as possible compared oh. to like more of cartoony hmm, slap, huh, um, very... Um, Fast, like fast paced animation. They wanted to show n nature more and that. So it was very more of like relying on like my past experience to like being in the outdoors, thinking of stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, snowshoeing, how we tried to figure out how that would work without having snowshoes. And we'd be like running back and forth <laughs> in the, in the studio as we watch each other, how do you walk? Is it like a waddle? <laughs> so right. it was a lot of um, lear learning in that perspective, which was quite nice. And like, I, again, I'm in the same boat as Megan. Uh, Meg, I have another show that I'm waiting for to be released, which was, um, they released a trailer recently with Dogs in Space, but until they release the, the season, I can't show any more of my, my actual animation, which I did full animation on that show. Right. And that was, such a more learning experience too because it just takes it from realism into a totally different direction <sighs> like so much more action based in that so it was quite the just so much of uh, building up and like quick learning but then after when you kind of get into especially when you understand the whole animation and the principles and if this becomes more routine to you in a sense or like yeah. i always take every scene as a challenge and i always enjoy it and i always get like quite i got quite a bit of like action sequences which are my favorite <laughs> excellent okay cool all right matthew all right let's bring in matthew's reel here yeah same like the others this is a little bit older stuff because some new stuff you can yeah, oh, Dorg is so cute. Yeah, so it's going to be from Dorg Van Dango and My Little Pony Equestria Girls. Um, My oh. Little, the Equestria Girls was made in Flash, and Dorg Van Dango was a co-production with Cartoon Saloon uh, that we made in Toon Boom. Cool. So both pretty fun shows. Um, I was doing full-out animation for uh, Dorg Van Dango. For Equestria Girls, I was actually doing animation revisions. Um, so that's kind of like fixing up um, animation. Um, there were some times where I could do like more full animation. It's like some of the clips that I put in, I like animated all myself, depending on how big the revision was. Um, but like, it's just a different point in the kind of the production pipeline for revisions, uh, which I've done for a couple of different productions. Uh, it's always there, but still, still animating. There you go. Lots of opportunity. And then you got you got some other stuff. You again, you can't talk about either too, right? Yeah. Um, it's just. Because that's, that's a little bit older. So I've worked on a couple of shows since then. Um, I worked on Johnny Test. Uh, that's up on Netflix now. Um, I didn't have any of that in my reel there because I haven't had a chance to put it in yet. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for that comment, Chacha Car Charlie. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and But I am working on Strawberry Shortcake right now. Usually I wouldn't be able to say that I'm working on that so soon. But it's doing a different kind of release schedule. Usually we would make shows and then it would go into the network. It's like a year between us finishing a show and it actually be going to TV or to Netflix or whatever. Um, but Strawberry Shortcake is actually being uploaded to YouTube. So we're still making it right now and they're uploading like they're just short little four or five minute episodes. Um, and they're uploading like a new episode every week. So it's like a really fast paced release schedule mm -hmm. compared to when things usually uh, go out. Um, Strawberry Shortcake is a fun show. The new episodes, Barry and the Big City, are up on YouTube. Go check it out. <laughs> oh, cool. 
Nice. Okay. All right. All right. Excellent. So we got to see some work. Proof that these people can animate. <laughs> Proof that there's jobs time. and steady work. I mean, there's jobs out there, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the biggest question I have from that is like, is Dorg a thumb? He looks like a thumb. I don't know the guy oh, that's like walking no, no, around. That was that was um R D. Dorg is the was the boy. Um R D oh, okay. the big thick guy. Um he's a shape shifting alien. Okay, that explains. okay, I'll go with yeah. that then then thumb. Yeah. Okay, that's good. He, yeah, the, the thumb character is a shape shifting he's like a blob. Okay. Okay. <laughs> then I'm cool with that. I'm I can accept that, no problem. Okay, so Ken, we got a lot of questions here. You wanna uh, draw yeah. one out and then we can gonna, let our panel I'm gonna... I'm scrolling up a bit. I'm going to start with this one, and then we do have a lot of questions. So we'll sort of anyone who wants to jump in and answer, uh, feel this will be kind of a free for all from our panel, uh, and just keep it keep it uh, concise. But uh, here is what are the job opportunities for 2D character animators outside of working on movies and shows? That is a good question. Uh, I mean, outside of movies and shows, there's video games. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to move them around. Uh, there's, there's also like there's a great um, indie scene for smaller teams. Uh, you can just get together with your friends and make a, a video game, or even just make some short films for yourself and put up on YouTube. Um, yeah, like mobile games too. Um, a lot of it uh, can be used for that as well. Yep, Th that's how I got started in the the industry. When I graduated from Nate, I was making mobile games, um, mostly 3D animation because my Nate education ended up being more 3D with Maya um, and video games. Uh, but it was a good start. And we did some 2D animation stuff as well, but kind of wherever there's people moving around, you got to animate them. So uh, video games, uh, commercials need animation, um, just like little Maybe you're making advertisements, like little animated GIFs or something. Um, mm -hmm. So, Yeah, a good friend of mine, actually, she graduated from Sheridan, and she's doing more, like Matt said, she, she's a freelancer, and she gets paid quite well to do just little one-offs. And, oh. yeah, she, she does really, really well for herself. And it's just kind of like, yeah, she puts her work out there. Like, they commission her to do, do certain little things. And it's like, it's not a TV show or a movie. It's like little blips, like advertising, like you said, yeah. or yeah, there's a whole bunch of different random ones that yeah. you- Yeah, I've, I've known a colleague too. Uh, she actually worked a little bit on a music video that was for YouTube. Tons, so yes. There was, oh, yeah, there's videos, quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, out, there's also um, like social media is kind of growing as a place. So you could do yeah. like Twitch overlays for people. You could start up your own Patreon if you want to go down the route of like, making your own following and like your your business um, and just make little like um, small boo who makes um, like Batman, Potterman. Um, <laughs> like that's not really like, I mean, it's a show, but it's not a TV show. And it's, I mean, they're a studio now, uh, but yeah. like you can start really small uh, and kind of build up from there. So. Yeah. It There's kind of depends on the opportunities that come your way because um, I know there was one fellow who graduated from 2D uh, in our school, Jan, uh, Dan Schoening, and he's been uh, drawing the Ghostbusters comic book for IDW Publishing for the last 10 years. So that's, that's I mean, it's unusual, but I mean, I'm sure it's all about like what happens and what you're interested in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are routes you can go off of besides just doing stuff for TVs or movies. Yeah, uh, and even I, I've seen a couple people asking about storyboarding um, as a thing. Um, yeah. Knowing how animation works gives you a good way to storyboard for it. Uh, same with character design. If you want a character design for animation, it's good to yeah. know how animation works because you don't really want overly complicated characters in animation because you're either moving them around or redrawing them over and over again. So knowing how to simplify those characters and getting the ideas across that you need in their design. Uh, but it's, it's good to know how things work to know how to make them work for it. Uh, so character design, storyboarding, um, comic books, like uh, like Patrick said, um, yeah, children's book, yeah, graphic novels, children's book illustrations, um, yeah. just illustrations. Um, yeah, some yeah. animators cross over into children's book illustrations. They too. do, yep. Yeah. yeah, strong posing is everything. Um, yeah. Something that I wanted to jump off of too. Oh, 
Okay, let me see if it comes back to me. Do you want to repeat some words? Oh, yeah. Okay, it'll come back to you. When it comes it'll back to you, just back to cut us off at, at any point and just let us know. <laughs> but we're cool with that. Hey, right. hey Ken. Yeah. I, there's a recent question there. Can you highlight it from Karen at 629? Uh, am I at a big came, disadvantage? Yeah, the big disadvantage one. Oh, that, yeah, okay. So Karen's asking, am I at a big disadvantage starting out at age 578? Well, wow. I even get hired anywhere. Karen, I like to say if you're at age 578, we will hire you so we can figure out how to get to that age. I think that's actually a pretty damn good skill to have. So I'm, if by chance you didn't mean to type in 578, maybe you put 57 in, that's a legitimate question. Let's ask, let's answer that as well too. So there's people that are might be considering a second change in life, another career, yeah. what the case is. Van Arts is a one-year course, so you can come in, you can do 12 months, you get the training and preparation to go out to the workforce. What about your comments too? Do you or what about your experiences? Do you get to see people that are doing 57? Okay. Maybe that doesn't give me hope for like getting past 100 now, but okay, that's fine. So what about you? I mean, do you see people that are a little older that are doing animation? Uh, and what are the opportunities there? Yeah, um, age, okay, nothing but a number. It, it's all about the work that you make um, and like the strength of your employer and, and your animation skills. And nobody's going to care how old you are. Um, do we all want to say how old we are now? If it, yeah, I'm, I'm 31. So I went to school when I was 25, I guess, to Van Arts. Yeah. Or Matthew will be the only one that says his age now. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> I, I'm 36, so I did actually go to Van Arts in my 30s um, to to learn because I was in the same little boat. It was like, will I find a job as soon as I'm done? Like, uh, there's a lot of youth in the field, but also relying again on my work experience because you're also working in a team and you have to realize like you have to work together even though you're given a set quota but you are working together as a team you want to be able to talk and communicate because that's very important as well especially for continuity and like if you are stuck because sometimes you you're in a scene and like i i'm not too sure what to do you reach out to your supervisor or a colleague it's like hey do you have any ideas yeah so it's very like collaborative effort mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess somebody who's a little sorry, I don't mean no, to cut you it off. It really doesn't matter. It's what matters. How old are you, Meg? All about the work. I'm 27. I'm 27. <laughs> <laughs> but but age really, it doesn't matter at all. And I'm gonna go back because I remembered something really important about the last question. I think it's great to try and find new and innovative innovative ways to be an animator, but I think it's so important to try with the studio experience first. Because you're going to learn so many more things about how a pipeline and a production works, which you won't get at Van Arts just because you make the whole thing yourself. Like, you'll get told about it, but experiencing it yeah. is a completely different thing. You'll learn more about time management and everything, whereas you're solely focusing on the art in the program more so. so yeah, the learning doesn't yeah. stop after school. Um, no! I probably, I probably learned more <laughs> stuff um, at the studio than I did at Van Arts. Like, I learned a lot of stuff at Van Arts in school, um, and it seemed like everything there is to know when you're in there, and then you get out and you think, man, I know so much stuff. Oh no, I don't know anything. <laughs> Uh, and then you just kind of keep learning. I mean, I'm still learning. I've been doing this for how many years now? Um, and I don't think that going into school, I'll, I'll call it a mature student, um, somebody who's older. Um, I don't, oh, okay. Um, I thought I was muted for a second. Um, I don't think that there's actually like a downside to being older and being a mature student. If anything, it might be an advantage. Um, I would have yeah, considered, you know. considered myself a mature student um, at 25 because I had gone to two or three different like um, post-secondary educations like before that leading into it. Um, so like you have a different work ethic than somebody fresh yes. out of high school. Um, mm -hmm. And school is always going to be only ever what you put into it. You're, you're only going to get that back. If you don't put anything into it and you just kind of coast by, it's not going to go great for you. Um, everybody's going to be getting the same education um, and the same help from the same people. 
And if you aren't putting into it, you're not going to be getting education back out of it. And as a mature student, you kind of see the value in that a bit more. And that work ethic is going to push you through it a little bit better than somebody who doesn't have that ethic. Um, and then once you graduate, um, I, I don't want to say that it's going to be a detriment um, to like if if somebody is looking if, if like a HR or a, a recruiter is looking at two different people, they have the exact same skill qualities. And the only difference is this person is fresh out of high school. Um, how many like how long have they worked? Do they have a job history? And they look at somebody who's 40, 50, 60, like, OK, this person's worked before. Um, they probably can show up on time. Um, I don't I've, I've been told that this had a bit of an effect when I was hired on at one point. Um, right after I graduated, um, I was engaged. And so I was going to get married shortly after I was hired. Um, and I went my director at the time said that was one of the things that kind of made you look like a respect, like not respectable, but um, a um, What's the word? Responsible. Responsible. Dependable. 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 Um, there you go. I mean, you don't have to be married to be dependable, but uh, yeah. it <laughs> it kind of was like this person's even married. They're going to be living with somebody and have bills to pay, and they're probably not going to just skip out and vanish for uh, a weekend to go to Cuba or something like that. I mean, couples can still do that, but yeah. Okay, Karen. Oh. If you're dependable, you're not going to go to Cuba. You've got a shot. <laughs> Okay. I mean, so, I Cuba, think... though. Bring your computer. Everything's work from home now. You could be wherever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Home. That. But I mean, like you know, like skipping out on the job. Mm -hmm. yeah, Look, yeah. if you have a question about this, we can uh, hook you up with um, Wayne Gilbert, who's our head of department. You can ask him the question about this too. You feel comfortable with that? Uh, Ken can put the email in there, and you can have a chance. You can even audit the program, and you can ask those questions about that. But. That's, I think this is good advice coming from these younger juveniles here in the room. Um, so it seems like there's an opportunity. Okay, so we got lots more questions. So let's okay, get around to those. Let's throw in this one. Most important thing to include in a portfolio or reel? Your best work. The best, best work, work that you have at the time. Yes. Um, and a variety, if you have it. A variety of different styles. Don't worry as much about that coming out of fan arts because you probably won't have as much time to experiment with a whole bunch of different styles. And they're going to be aiming for that moon movie quality anyway, like more full animation at fan arts, not as snappy in my experience. That we just because it's easier to tone it back than it is to push it forward. So when you have the skills to do full animation, it's easier to go back. Um, Put in some good dialogue scenes, like either like chest up, head up, um, to show expressiveness in the face. And then if you have action shots as well, do a mix of the two. Try and make it engaging. Start off with your best work too. Uh -huh. Do something right off the bat that is your very best. Don't save it for the end, because maybe they already stopped watching it. And you're like, no, they didn't see my best shot. So start uh -huh. with it. Yeah. The first shot should be your best shot. Your last shot should be your second best shot. Yeah, oh, exactly. Good. So you start on a good note and you end on a good note. Not as good as the first note, but still good. You want to leave them like a good opinion. Um, yeah. It also, um, don't just put stuff in there just to pat it. Like, don't think I need to put all of my animation. My demo reel is 30 seconds, and I work very hard to get it down just to 30 seconds because mm -hmm. the people viewing these see like dozens or hundreds of them at a time. And very often they will open it up, just like give it a play. And in those first couple of seconds, like it might just be the first shot, they'll just know what they're seeing uh, and just close it or keep it going um so that is very important like mike said to have that first shot be the best shot um but if you're putting scenes into your demo reel or into your portfolio some art pieces and you think should i put this in here don't put it in there um oh, only put things in there that you're 100 sure um, are good and are like the best representation of your work because you don't anything you put in there your portfolio is only going to, even though you're starting off with like the best, the second best at the ending, your portfolio is only going to be as good as the worst part in your portfolio. And if you're putting things in there just to pad the length and fill it out, it's it's not going to be better for it. It's going to be worse. Um, it's better to have a smaller, better, tighter demo reel and portfolio than it is to have a larger thing with a lot of middling, okay content. Yeah, a minute is fine. A minute is like long especially coming right out of school like that's it even 30 seconds if it's all really good stuff 
they're going to want to contact you. Uh, fresh out of school, you're also going to be getting into the entry positions. So you don't need to be like at a certain point, you will be competing with the pros uh, that have, people have been doing it all the years. But when you get to that point, you'll also be doing it for years. You're not competing with with like us. You're competing with um, everybody else out of school because you're going for the entry positions and they know this person just out of school. Like this might not be the best, but like this is this is pretty good for a student and there's there's growth potential here. So don't don't think I'm not animating as good as the cartoons that I see on TV because you won't be. Um, and they'll give you they'll they'll start you off with like a smaller quota easier scenes and you'll slowly ramp up and build up to like the, the standard um, quality level but you don't need to be there i mean if you can be you'll be better off for it but you don't need to be right away uh, i'll just quick because we're talking about demo reels uh vlad is saying so which are the best length for a demo reel 30 seconds 30 seconds to a minute um, yeah it's pretty good yeah I have seen some people who came in to Van Art who were like my teacher. He was at Sony, and his demo reel was like two minutes, but he worked for Sony, so <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. You get the extra time. The more jobs yeah. you get, the more time you get. Yeah, yeah. the more good stuff you have. Yeah, if you've been on movies for so long, then yeah, show all that movie quality stuff. That's great. Um, but yeah, don't feel the pressure to do too that yeah fill it with your best stuff that you have at the time mm -hmm. uh, okay so here's a question what animation programs and by programs i assume it means software can you recommend to someone just starting animation uh, and um animate flash and Toon Room harmony are like the kind of the standard for 2d animation um flipbook Pro, I guess. Like I, the first animation I made was probably on a Post-it note, um, just like a little flipbook animation. <laughs> um, you could start like Captain Underpants style, where it's just two drawings that you just flip the pages between. That's all animation is. Yeah. It's just different. Picture. Somebody was asking about Flip a Clip app. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I haven't heard of that. Um, yeah. Really, this goes back to what I said earlier, where um, and I think what everybody else also said was. The tool doesn't matter. Um, anything you can get that you can animate with, that's the best one to use, um, especially if you're on a budget. Um, there, there are subscription models for them now. I don't know. Does Toon Room have a subscription model, like a monthly? I think they have I a have student the yearly one. package. Yeah, student one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, you can get, um, like, 10 maybe $25 a month. It might probably vary depending where you live. Um, but if you want to try them out these programs, even just for, like, um, a month or two months, there's also a lot of um, really good tutorials just on YouTube to learn the program, um, mm -hmm. and then you can just start animating. But mm -hmm. the best, the best program I would say to learn animation is whatever program you have access to that lets you animate. If anyone has uh, Procreate too, like if you have an iPad, it has like pretty simple animation things that you can play around with. And then there's classes like Schoolism online that I even was looking at to see how to use it on my Procreate. Ooh, I did a Schoolism class. That was point. fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Yeah. It's really cool because then, like, you're also forced to be drawing right on your iPad if you're already comfortable with it. That can be a good jumping off point, too. So. Before you answer this question, I just want to quickly... I've got to find another room. Apparently, I'm I'm at the school, and people want to come in here and use it for a class. How dare they? Oh. But you know, <laughs> I'm gonna go find another room. So continue on, and I'll be back in okay. a couple of minutes. Okay. All right. Uh, is this ending in 15 minutes, or can we go a little bit past we, the hour? Well, we we try to keep these close to an hour. We can go a little bit over. We'll try to get as many questions in here, but we but we want to. We know that, especially for Meg, it's pretty late where you are. You're three hours ahead of us. So. Yeah, I already had like the drop and I'm back. So. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So we'll 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 answer as many questions as we can in the next fifteen or twenty minutes. Um, so, in relation to software, somebody was asking. This was a good question: Is Harmony the only program learned in Van Arts? So you guys were in the two D stream of the program. Um, you spent most of your time using Harmony. Um, in the 3D stream, uh, which we'll be talking about tomorrow night, is Maya. 
uh, that we use in, at Van Arts for the 3D program. But what other programs did you guys pick up when you were in the 2D program? Animation wise, for me personally, and I'm sure because we're all around the same time, it was only Toon Boom, but like we had to cut together things on Premiere. Um, we use yeah. Photoshop a lot for drawing backgrounds and character design, etc. Like for our final films. Um, did you guys use anything for storyboarding? I think I just used Photoshop as well. I, I, I use Photoshop. Yeah. Um, I storyboarded on paper. Oh, of course yeah. you did. <laughs> I, I thumbnail sketch if that counts. Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly how they were. Uh, they did. Flash was available um, to use. I knew it from before, but I. Uh, there were some people that did learn how to use Flash. Um, yeah. Van Arch isn't just a 2D animation either. They, there was a 3D animation side. Uh, and there we, we have the, the same lectures, um, but we're split up. We're all 2D students. Um, I think this is a, a 2D chat, but it, it does teach you Maya as well if you want to learn how to use uh, the 3D animation. Yeah. I, I think they give you options too. Like if you really want to do like hand drawn, they do have the old discs there yes. and they will let you do hand drawn as well or if there is another program, they will accommodate you as, as much as they can if you are comfortable in like Flash compared to uh, Harmony. Or the, if like if you decide if you want to do 3D instead, like they, like I find they were very accommodating because I remember one student was in one class and then they decided, well, I think I preferred 2D over 3D and they were able to switch over. Yeah, that can sometimes happen too, yeah, for sure. All right. So someone was asking about software as a character designer. Now, some of you guys might have done some character design. Or would, would Did we lose you? Ken? What? He's frozen. Oh. Oh. He's frozen. OK, oh, but you can see me now. No, I'm there. Okay. Yes. Um, OK. I, I used Photoshop as well as uh, Clip Studio for my character design. But I think that the in the industry, it's like Photoshop's usually the go to. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you I want guess to, I'm, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Mac. If you want, like, I do some of my own designs too, and I use Procreate as well. Like, okay. but Studio, it is Photoshop. All my designer friends work in Photoshop. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, as we're waiting for Ken and Matthew to join us back, I'll I'll grab some questions here what? and I'll from. What? <laughs> what? No, I'm. Or do you I'm, see him? Yeah, yeah. I can see. Oh, I don't see him on my end, so I guess maybe okay. it's just one of my things. Uh, everybody's here, and I have the stream open in my. In Hang on a sec. Lab. Maybe I have to join back to to see that. Give me a moment. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm in. The, I have the the YouTube video open now, so I can be in the chat too. Oh, is that how is that? Okay. Because wow. our little oh, window nice. doesn't let us yeah, type in the chat, so I've just opened up the YouTube live stream and muted it. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Wow, that's great. Um, okay, so here was another question that's kind of related as well. Um, do you need to draw really well before taking the Van Arts program? Could it be good at drawing Stickman and learn from there? You don't need to know how to draw. No, like a, <laughs> they, 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 for the portfolio, it's like you, it's just like the best to your ability, um, just to see. But there was quite a few that, like. I wasn't as strong as a as an artist when I before I took the mm. life drawing classes. I found that helped me out so much and just help with form and just understanding silhouette and just like how the body structure foreshortening. Mm -hmm. If you decide to go the route of being specifically a harmony animator too, I know a lot of my friends who are supervisors and above and their technical drawing is like they know what Amanda said, they know how to make a strong pose, but they can work off the build and make it amazing. Like it does help so much. So as long as you learn the fundamentals of making a good pose, then you're going to be fine. Yeah. With, mm -hmm. with the advancements that 2D has had with tech, it does make it easier to get around not being the best drawer, like by any means. So. Yeah, you don't even know how to draw, even to animate anymore. I, no, I can't. I can't draw any of the characters on model. I can pose them. I can make uh, one hand drawing and an arm drawing and change my eyebrow. Yeah. Um, for uh, you will draw some stuff like 
um, at school, you don't need to really know how to draw it at all well. You just need to get your ideas across for thumbnails. Uh, yes. You'll learn how to rig things. Uh, so you will draw your own characters and rig them. You can use those for your assignments if you want. Uh, but they also, there's also, uh, I'm assuming that the Wayne rig still exists in some form. Oh, no. um, <laughs> so if you go and look at any of our portfolios from Van Arts um, or anybody's portfolio from Van Arts, you'll probably see the same kind of bald faced character just in every single one. Uh, and that's a rig that Wayne made or Charles made, maybe both of them. Uh, and you can use that for all your assignments. You could use that for your final assignment, uh, for your big final film that you make. You, uh, we get like the benefit where we can make our 2D animation finals be a bit more personal because we can make our characters look however we want. Uh, 3D can download some different rigs to make their stuff look a bit different. Um, but your your final film doesn't need to be like a big character designed, background heavy uh, masterpiece. It just needs to be well animated. And whatever rig you use for that doesn't matter. It could be the Wayne rig. It could be the provided stuff. It could be another one that you find online for free. It could be your classmates that you really like their rig. And you just said, can I please use this? And they say, yeah, do it. Um, I'm not at the studios. There's whole departments that make the builds and draw all the props and draw everything. Uh, and they give it to us and we just make it move. All right. I saw someone in the chat talk about someone I know. Oh, who was that? Someone was talking about Wy um, Wiley Townsend. Oh, yeah. Um, we had a question, too. Let me, let me find yeah, out. Yeah, just about flexibility with moving in animation. Wiley's a great guy. Yeah, he moved from Seattle to Vancouver to Montreal now. Right. Oh, is he in Montreal now? He's in Montreal, yeah. So, um, many, so many guys are in Montreal now. A lot of stuff yeah, going on yeah. Honestly, yeah, I feel like it It kind of doesn't matter. It's whatever you want. This is the great thing about animation, especially right now, being like in the pandemic world, almost post-pandemic, let's be optimistic here. But all of us are working from home. Like Amanda works for Atomic Vancouver, but she lives up north. Yeah, I live. I still live in BC because some productions still need the tax credit, unfortunately. Yeah. But I'm. You can be anywhere in BC. It doesn't doesn't have to be Vancouver, so you don't have to pay the crazy rent down there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Like for me personally, I've moved around a lot. Like my family's in Ontario, and I love Vancouver, so I I'm kind of okay bouncing between the two. Um, but it was my decision to come here to work. I could have stayed in Vancouver, and uh, Vancouver is the best city in all of Canada for animation. I'm just going to go to yeah. there. Are, yeah, I can only speak for Canadian animation, but it's like Vancouver, Ottawa, and Montreal are really Toronto. big ones. Yeah, Toronto is Toronto. It's good. It's good. It's not as good as Ottawa, I find, personally, because I kind of dip my foot in Toronto. Um, and then Halifax is okay. And how is how is Alberta, Matt? No. no. <laughs> uh, there's there's a little bit of a video game scene. Um, I, mean, I was in it for a little bit. It, it's mostly Bioware in um, in Edmonton. Uh, I was at a small mobile game studio called Fluic, um, Fluic Entertainment. And we made just some small little games. Um, there's a couple of other indie studios uh, there as well. Um, I can't. Bioware's the biggest one. They made like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, um, and all sorts of other classics. Uh, but it's there's not really um, uh, uh, an animation. There's not an animation industry there. If you want to animate, it's going to be for industrial stuff. Like this is how an oil rig works. This is the training video for this farming equipment. Um, that's most of the animation jobs that I see out there which some people are into, not me. Cool. And depending so, on what studios you work through too, because like I worked in for the Vancouver Atomic, but I also helped out at the Ottawa <laughs> studio, even though I am in BC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of connections like that where you can cross work across country Remote, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So this was a good question about, um, some people are asking, you know, how stable is animation as a career? And, you know, the fact that you guys are working steadily, I think it's, it can be definitely pretty stable, but is it more common to work one year contracts or do you aspire to be like, is it, is animation the kind of thing where you kind of hop from contract to contract for a few months or a year, or is it more stable full-time most, for most people? 
uh, animation is kind of contract to contract, um, and how long that contract is going to be is going to depend on the whatever you're working on. Um, you get hired for a show, and once that show is done, the job's gone. Um, but studios usually like to keep the same people around, especially once they know, hey, I like you, which is why I've been at Wild Brain since I graduated. Um, I keep moving from one show to the other show. So we aren't really um, like full-time employees, and we keep signing new contracts, um, but the contracts kind of keep coming. Yeah, it's my same experience with Atomic. Like I just keep rolling into one production after the other. Um, so like they contact you before the contract ends. So you, and you just get set up really for the next one as well as like, if you want to break in between, like you can accommodate for that. Like I need to have a, a week or so off just to recharge myself. <laughs> yeah. Like for me too, it's, it's always contract to contract and some are not even a year long. Like for me, Last Kids was two years, which was an insanely long contract for a TV show. Like Ooh. unheard of long. But usually, I don't know, like six months is pretty typical, I would say, on most shows. The longest um, contract I had was 10 months, I think, for Dorg. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mine was 18, but that was on Molly and I kept jumping departments. <laughs> I, I'm on a four month contract, I think, right now. Okay, yeah. Right. My cousin works for uh, Mainframe, and he's actually full time. He's an animator, and he's full time. But he's worked there for twenty years. But I, I'm trying to remember when they offered him full time. Took a while. Yeah. Took, but he is full time. It's it's not common though. Mm -hmm. All right. Good to know. So this question has been asked a couple times. Uh, is learning how to animate useful for someone who wants to direct movies in general? Uh, what do you guys know about that? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not a director. Uh, none of us are directors. What am I saying? We've all said what we are. Um, I think that the more you know about any part of the process is going to improve how you work inside of that process. Um, like I've said, you don't need to animate to be a character designer, but it can help because you know how animation interacts with the character designs. You don't need to be a character designer or a, story, or a storyboarder to animate, but knowing how to do those things is good. Um, the directors that I've worked with have come with different from different backgrounds. Um, I worked on a show earlier this year that one of the directors came from a storyboarding background and the other director came from an animation background. And they both directed uh, and they both had different things that they brought to the table, which was kind of like when different issues came up in the production, they each had a different way to solve it. And if one didn't know how to do it, they could think, this isn't an animation problem, this is a storyboarder problem. Let's go ask the storyboarding director. Oh, cool. So um, it, it, that's also a good reason. If you want to be a director, don't go and approach a studio and say, hire me as a director. Work your way up yeah. uh, first to get the studio to know you and show that you can be trusted to be a director, uh, but also learn the process. That's kind of what I'm trying to do right now is learn as much as I can about the whole production pipeline. Um, just the more you know about how um, the sausage gets made, the better sausage it'll be. As well as like talk to the other departments too. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Meg. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Uh, just like just discussing with the other departments. Um, like Molly was such a nice learning curve for me. That was being my first production. Like I would be talking to like the storyboard to the builds team, and just learning the process and then understanding everything going together, and. Uh, like I was on there as well for like as uh, helping with continuity as we were watching storyboards because that's another that was another thing too that was always be caught and and just like just talking just like just well, communications really the biggest thing it's like I want to learn this and most people will be gladly to show you how how whatever they're doing like from backgrounds to their design cause it's just it's just opening a conversation. All right. We're getting near the end, so maybe yeah. we could do like a couple of really rapid fire questions and answers. Yeah. Try to keep it down to like yeah. yes, no, maybe, forget about it, don't think about it, move away, <laughs> you know, yeah. that type of thing. So okay, we'll, just, we'll throw in a few a few questions. Some, some of these questions are kind of we're sort of answering them through other other answers as well. So and if and if we miss any questions. We'll put um, you know the Van Arts email here at the end as well. You can always um, continue this, and we're going to do another webinar tomorrow night about 3D. So you can always 3D animation. Out. We're going one dimension up. Yeah, one dimension up. So 
Uh, how long, now this is a question that comes up a lot for animators. How long does it take to make one minute of animation? How long does it take? It's a loaded you know, question. Quotas, don't you? <laughs> it, it depends. Yeah. I'm going to say two weeks. There you go. <laughs> Uh, just because I had on Dork Bandango, our quota was 30 seconds of animation a week. Uh, the, the quota that is, is going. <laughs> was it 30 seconds? Hang on, wait. No, I'm a liar. Uh, oh, it was 18 God. seconds. <laughs> it was 18. I don't know why I thought 30 seconds. Uh, three and a half weeks. Um, it was 18 oh, seconds um, a week for Dork Bandango. Um, so that's that's posing uh, and then animation for that show. Um, each show will be a little bit different, just how complex the, like a very snappy show, like Johnny Test, is a bit faster than a fuller animated show, like uh, Last Kids on Earth. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it, it is going to, to vary, um, but the, the production should should um, be budgeted with um, like that in mind and how long it's going to take each animator to be making the scenes. I'm going to quote Charles on this, Charles Phillips, and say, get good first and then get fast. Ah, that's great. Yes. <laughs> cool. On that note, when I'm in Van Arts, how available are the teachers? Will I need my own equipment or can I use my own equipment? So I saw Matthew in the chat room answering some of this question too. So yeah. Is that right? okay. thank you. Peace. But uh, yeah, no, everybody gets uh, uh, their own tablet, their own desktop. So you have two monitors, you have your own workstation. Uh, you've got your own uh, uh, industrial strength uh, steel chain and ball strapped to your ankle so you can never leave your workstation at all too. You're there, you're there for 18 months fully. Uh, no, 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 you get a little bit of break. Um, but yeah, no, you get all the equipment, all the software is included in, in the price of going to school. The only thing that's not included is uh, a sketchbook and pencils and pens if you wanna have that to do doodles in. For life drawing classes and things. Yeah. 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 You guys think back to how that was, how often were you in class every day? I was working class, late? Uh, I, was, I was an early bird, so I would be there right. an hour before the school, like it was time for classes. Oh, yeah. I would roll in and Wayne would say, where have you been? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I actually um, lucked out because um, I, I have my own Cintiq that I bought at a point in my life where I could afford it. I couldn't get it now. Um, I don't think I, mean, I could if I saved up for it, but it's hard. It's a big expense. Um, so I, uh, I know what people did stay at the school more to work because um, do you, I, I used to have Yanovas or do you have Cintiqs? What, it was Yanovas when we were there. Which are pretty I think solid. That's what we still have, yeah. Okay, yeah. So there is like, um, it's not a Cintiq, but it's the same idea where you can draw directly on the screen. Um, so you can do that. Uh, and there were people that were there later than I was uh, because they didn't have a computer at home that they could be animating with. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it's homework. Any school you do is going to have homework and work outside of class times. Um, but there were times where I did want to be working late instead of at home alone on my computer. I'd want to be at school working late, getting pizza, hanging out with my class. If you go to the, the Facebook page, we posted four photographs up from the uh, junior TD classroom this week. So yeah. if you want to see what it looks like with the workstations and the other people and what they're doing, um, go to uh, go to the Facebook, type in Van Arts, you'll see what I mean. Three ball and chain. <laughs> you only get the chain, the ball's extra. You get the chain, yeah, you, you got you to gotta provide the ball. Yeah, you can animate the ball yourself to add to the chain, but... You know, it's not the same thing. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so um, as we sort of wrap up here, there's there were a few questions here that we had about um, about portfolios and applying to Van Arts and scholarships as well. Just to answer that really quickly, on behalf of our admissions team that Patrick and I work with, um, you know, you can get. Uh, there are scholarships available a certain amount per year that we do give out. They're partial scholarships, usually maybe anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars just to take a bit of the edge off for exceptional portfolios and really, really strong applications. So we only give out so many per year. Um, and um, so that can be done. You can, if you're a Canadian student or a permanent resident, you can apply for student loans as well. And that helps you to get through to the program. And I posted a couple links into the chat 
with our full admission requirements and everything that you would need in order to apply. We have two start dates per year. So we have an a intake that comes in and that starts in March and another intake that starts in September. Um, so you can basically, uh, it's first come first serve, you apply when you're ready, but if you're looking to start as soon as possible, the next one coming up, the soonest one coming up is March of 2022. Um, and that is when a lot of applications are coming in for that right now. Um, there's also a portfolio guideline link as well, which has really specific guidelines of what we want to see in a portfolio for animation. Um, and this has been all put together by the animation department, and that's also on our website as well. Do you make public um, some successful portfolios that have gotten in? Um, oh, you mean like from students that submitted? Yeah. We like, have a few. Do you have an example of this person got accepted? This person didn't. Yeah. There's a couple things that uh, I think we have. I, I have a few slides that we show in high schools that are going to show how, like, we don't show full portfolios necessarily, but mm -hmm. but we do uh, we do have examples of things like that on that link. There's some examples of uh, portfolio stuff. I think it's a good idea, though. We should we should uh, the ones the people who don't get in, we should put that on our our social media and and here's a link to their social media. Okay. Comment on that. Speaking of social media, I did see a comment like, can we follow you on Instagram or something? If you guys have questions after, totally yeah. you can reach out to me on Instagram. It's just my name, Meg Leader. And I'm totally happy to answer any other questions, like anytime, because we all pay it forward in this industry. And yeah, I think it's really important to keep connected with people. Like, it's so crazy. I went to school with both of these guys. We walked the halls of Van Arts together. We're pros and, now. Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, you can find me on uh, Facebook with my name as well. Do you have any questions? Um, I don't have an Instagram, but I do have a website that has my name on it um, and a Tumblr <laughs> that I never check anymore. But I can set up something on my Tumblr to get like um, asks if you want to ask me questions. Um, there's my email or my, my website is MatthewLaRose.com. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's awesome. There's another Matthew LaRose. He's a painter and he has Matthew hyphen LaRose.com. Oh, I stole okay. this one out from under him and I bet he and he's aware of it. I know he is because I <laughs> count some of his up. That's awesome. All right. Cool. So I think we'll uh we'll wrap things up here and um and I'll put in as well the email to our admissions department. The other thing as well, if any of you guys who are ready to apply, just get in touch with our admissions department. You can email them directly there. And like I said, you can also register on our website for the webinar we're going to do tomorrow night with a couple of our 3D animation grads. So if you're curious about that. But thank you, you guys, so much for your time and your expertise and your advice and nuggets of wisdom for the animated realms. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. This was, yeah, was you guys just took the ball on your arm with it. This was really great. And it was really good to hear the similarities and the differences. Um, I like to think that the people listening got a lot of value out of this. I know there's way more questions that they asked and, you know, hopefully they can get more answers later on, but you guys did an amazing job just talking about what you've done and, and what school was like for you at Van Arts. So thanks a lot. Really, really great. I love to pretend to know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm glad it's a good feeling, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a good feeling pulling the wool over people's eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good luck to everybody applying. It's going to be right. great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I've set up an ask thing on my Tumblr. Send me asks. That's okay. how it works. I haven't been on there for years. Okay. So I'll watch it for a while. So visit Matthew's website, uh, Amanda on Facebook, and Meg on Instagram. That's where you can find them. Right. Is the 3D animation webinar going to be live streamed too? Yes, yeah. we'll be doing the exact same okay. thing. We'll be doing this. Yeah, so go register. When is the 3D live stream coming? It's tomorrow, one hour from tomorrow. It's tomorrow, yeah. We're now breaking up. We're not talking about the animation as 2D, 3D together. We're now talking as two separate things because mm -hmm. there's the reason, whatever. There's, a, there's enough differences it. to do. I, I understand. Yeah, and then next year we're starting the 4D animation program. It's kind of strange. <laughs> And then 5D, and then 6D. And I'm whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
Cool. All right. So we'll wrap up. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And thanks to our panel. Thanks to Patrick. And have a good night. Okay. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.